Welcome, my name is Tomasz and you're watching Casual DIY channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about router feed direction. So if you are a beginner to woodworking or you just bought your first router and you're not sure which way should you be actually pulling or pushing the router, you're in the right place. Now it's easy to get confused which way you should go with your router and the best example is a picture frame that I'm going to use in this video to show you which directions you actually should be going. A picture frame like this one has got an outer edge and inner edge and depending on which edge you want to use your router you're going to go in different ways. Now a router is considered as a fairly dangerous tool. It does have a spinning bit right at the bottom that if your hands get in the way can cause some harm. Let's start with some basics. The normal way as you are holding the router with the router bit pointing downwards the router bit will go clockwise okay that means it's spinning like so so it's digging into the material each time and with that motion of the router bit it wants to pull your router from right to left now that's called a climb cut which you should actually be avoiding but that's what we're going to talk a little bit later on if you go with that motion so from right to left there's a good chance you're going to be losing control over your router. That's why at all times you should be using something that's called a push cut. Push cut means you are going against the rotation of your router bit, so anti-clockwise, from left to right. As you are holding your router bit in this position, router bit going downwards, the back of the router bit is in contact with the edge. The situation changes when you're on the inside, okay? Now the front of your router bit is in touch with the edge itself. And now the blade, as it goes clockwise, it would be pulling your router from left to right. That's why on the inside, again, we need to go against the spinning blade. So we need to go from right to left. Even better and easier to understand is as the router bit is spinning clockwise, you always need to go anti-clockwise, okay? Regardless where you are on your project, the main danger going with the direction of the rotation of your router bit, i.e. clockwise, there is a potential of losing control. That means you can injure yourself or damage your workpiece. That's why it's always best to use the push cut, going against the rotation of the router bit. So let's take this bad boy for a spin and let me show you. So remember, on the outer edge, we're going from left to right. And now we've got a nice chamfer on our picture frame. However, on the inside edge, we're going to go from right to left against the rotation of our router bit. And there you go, got a nice channel inside of the frame. So in 90% of the cases of the cuts you're going to be making, you need to go against the rotation of your router bit. Outer edge from left to right, inner edge from right to left. And that's called a push cut, as you are pushing against the rotation of your router bit. However, on some occasions, you may want to do a climb cut. So that's a cut with the rotation of your blade. In 90% of the cases, it's not recommended and you should be avoiding that technique. You may want to do it if 
for example, with a normal push cut, you're getting a lot of tear out. But in that case, most of the depth of the cut needs to be done with a push cut. And only the last millimeter, just to ease out and smooth out the cut, you can do uh, the climb cut. So if you are going to use a climb cut, do it in really tiny passes. It will take you a lot longer, However, it will be a lot safer. Obviously, the workpiece you're gonna be working on needs to be firmly clamped down so it will not move on you. And you need to have full control of your router. The prime example where you would use a climb cut is if your piece is on a curve and the grain is going straight. So if you were to use the normal technique, push cut from left to right, you're gonna go against the grain onto the middle of the board and then with the grain. It's fine to go with the grain on a push cut. However, going against the grain with a push cut can lead to a lot of tear out and losing control of your tool. That's why you could use a climb cut in this scenario, but only from the middle of the board going to the left hand side, not the whole board. The remaining part of the board, you would still do a push cut. So a climb cut from the middle going to the left and a push cut from the middle going to the right. Let's try that out. The first cut we're gonna do is a climb cut. It's because we're gonna go in several passes, each time just taking a tiny amount of material so we can have full control of the tool. When we get to the correct depth that we want to, we're gonna swap to the push cut and we'll leave the router bit at the desired depth as that will be no problem for the router bit to go like so. Let me show you that now. That's the depth I want to go for, and now I can swap to the push cut, going the other way. This time, I'm straight away at the correct depth of the cut. And as you can see, we've got a nice chamfer all the way along the board, against the grain and with the grain. Now I hope this is a bit more clearer to you now what type of direction you should be using when um, working with a router. 99% of the cases it will be a push cut against the rotation of your uh, router bit. However a climb cut is also possible under some really certain scenarios where the push cut will not give you a good result or a safe way of doing things. But always remember about your safety. Make sure the workpiece is really well clamped down and it's not gonna move on you. And if you're doing a climb cut, make sure to take tiny passes each time. I do also have a video about basic information on routers, how they build, how they work, what different types of cuts you can do and everything like that. And I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description of this one and in the pinned comment so you can go ahead and check it out. Now I hope this information was informative to you and helpful as well. If you did enjoy it, drop me that like button down below and please consider subscribing. I do have a lot of cool videos about workshop jigs, workshop projects and everything like that. And I've got all those videos in some really nice playlists just for you. The playlist should appear now on the screen for you. So go and have a look. Maybe uh, there will be a video that you would be interested in. So hopefully I'll see you on those videos there. Take care.